Good day, friends. I'm Carrie Dillinger. This is Bible Class Topics. And today, don't confuse me with the facts. Well, our title reminded me right away of a time when our family went camping in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. And to get your clothes washed, you had to go outside the park to a public laundromat. We took our clothes to that laundromat, and of course, it was a public laundromat. It wasn't just for visitors to the park, so some of the locals were in there doing their laundry. And I struck up a conversation with some of them, and finally this one girl turned to me and said, Listen, what do you think about my t-shirt? So she showed me her t-shirt, and on the front of her t-shirt it said, If you have to think about it, forget it. Well, I thought for just a moment, because I sure didn't agree with that t-shirt, but I'm, I'm in their neighborhood, so I had to be careful. So I said, very interesting. Teaching the gospel is not always easy. Any Christian will tell you that the most challenging problem in teaching the gospel is reaching a person with a closed mind. How often do we meet a person with an attitude that shouts, Don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. In other words, it does not matter whether or not what you say is true. I'm going to believe and do exactly what I want. You could point to many scriptures and provide examples from the New Testament. You could quote the very words of Jesus, yet such a person will remain unmoved. Such an attitude would be almost humorous if it weren't so sad. We need to understand the world has always had such people in it, and we need to learn not to be discouraged. Let's start with Moses. For 120 years, did I just say Moses? Let's start with Noah. Noah, for 120 years, Noah preached repentance to a wicked world and warned of the impending flood. For 120 years, people slapped their hands over their ears whenever they saw Noah coming down the road. But then came the day when God shut the ark's door and the raindrops began to fall. The only ones who were saved were those who had spent 120 years with a hammer and a saw in their hands instead of their hands over their ears. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet to us today and for good reason. His mission was similar to Noah's and his audience was just as stubborn. For about 40 years, Jeremiah preached to the rebellious people of God to repent or face the wrath of God. Jeremiah had good reason to cry because his audience refused to listen to him and instead of putting their hands over their ears, they made fists and put them in Jeremiah's face. Jeremiah was declared a dangerous fanatic. He was beaten and put into stocks. A king burned his writings. He was called a traitor. He was beaten again. He was thrown in a dungeon. He was thrown into a cistern where he sank up to his armpits in mud, and finally he was carried off to Egypt. It is incredible to what great lengths people went to not hear Jeremiah. Somehow, some believe Jesus was exempt from prejudiced audiences. Even the Son of God, who spoke with all the power and truth of deity, faced people whose attitude expressed don't confuse me with the facts. Some refused to listen to Christ. Others mocked him. On one occasion, a mob tried to throw him over a cliff, and another time, some attempted to stone him. The prejudice against Christ and his message grew to the point that to silence him, his critics finally had him crucified. After all the plugged ears... Christians run into, Christians should not only learn not to become discouraged, but also learn an essential lesson on dull ears and closed eyes. Like Paul with the Jewish leaders in Rome in Acts 28 verses 25 through 27, and disagreeing among themselves, they departed after Paul had made one statement. 
And here he quotes Isaiah. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart is grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn. And then I would heal them. As Christians, we must beware of plugging our own ears, of shutting our own eyes, and closing our own mind to God's one infallible proof, namely His Word, the Bible. Christians can turn away their ears from the truth. We'll read 2 Timothy 4.4 4 in just a moment. And they can become just as stubborn and prejudiced, and even more so than those out in the world. Listen to Paul as he instructs the young preacher Timothy. First we'll look in 1 Timothy 4, and then we'll go look in 2 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who will forbid marriage and required abstinence from food that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Then skipping over to the second letter, chapter 4, verse 1, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Another young preacher that Paul wrote a letter to is Titus. Let's look in Titus 1, verses 13 through 16. Paul said, This testimony is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths, and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing can be pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny Him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for any good work. If there's anything worse than a person of the world with their fingers in their ears, then... It's a professed Christian with their fingers in their ears. The proper attitude for the Christian is to prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good, 1 Thessalonians 5.21. The proper attitude for the Christian is to study to show themselves approved, 2 Timothy 2.15. And examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so, like the faithful Berean Jews in Acts 17 verse 11. It's an attitude that does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. We learn in the 1 Corinthian letter, the 13th chapter, the so-called chapter of love, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, it endures all things. The Christian, with the proper attitude towards others, and the truth has his fingers turning the pages of his Bible instead of stuck in his ears. I've been back in the old church bulletins again. I found this article from Wayne Greason. I'll put a link to it in the description where you can read the whole article for yourself. It's over at padfield.com. And our photo that we used today of a man who was being confused by the facts that he had come to the edge of the cliff comes from Carol Stefanski over on Unsplash. Thank you for attending the video today. We hope you can come back and be with us in just a day or two. We'll try to post another video, Lord willing. Until then, may God bless.